In this ChatGPT tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get started, how to write blog posts in just a few commands, how to do general research like finding the best books about a particular topic and then summarising those books like taking away the keynotes and then even how to apply the information to your daily life and a few other neat things that you probably didn't realise ChatGPT could do but you'll be really surprised. Along the way you'll see just how powerful incorporating a tool like ChatGPT into your daily life can make the world of difference for writing, research and just helping perform general daily tasks. And if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them below. I tend to reply within a few hours. And if you can show support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel, that will be greatly appreciated. Hello, my name is Marty Englander. I am a full-time content creator and business owner who focus on using tools just like ChatGPT to automate all the daily tasks and streamline my systems so I can live a somewhat free lifestyle. With this being said, let's go ahead, jump into ChatGPT and get started with this tutorial. The first thing you want to do is head over to the URL chat.openai.com slash chat and I'll also leave the link in the description of this video along with a free prompt and command resource that you can utilize to help you get started. Let's go ahead and quickly go through the dashboard and what everything is. So when you start, you're going to have this button called new chat. This will start a new thread. A thread is this side here, which is all the inputs and commands that you put into this area. It will stay in a single thread. Think of a book. Every page of a book has different information, different text, etc. This is exactly what that is. This is a page of a book. Every time you click the new chat button, it will create a new thread or a page of the book then you can navigate between each of these pages or threads and carry on from where you left off with this particular information. The reason we have different threads is so we can keep our information focused on the commands or the theme of what we're trying to achieve in a particular thread. For example, if you are writing blogs all about dogs, every input you place here is training the system on that particular topic. So let's say you've done 10 commands all about dogs and then all of a sudden you change it to toast. Whilst ChatGPT is very clever, it's not really got any relation to the theme of what you're trying to accomplish. So you're better opening a new thread to talk about toast rather than incorporating the toast into the dog thread. This is because with every single input or focused input that you input into ChatGPT, you're actually training it more and more about on that particular topic. So the outputs will be better and better the further down the thread you go. So you don't want to confuse that by entering unrelated stuff into a single thread. Every new thread is a reset. Let's move on to how we can write a blog. We're going to start a new chat and considering we'll talk about dogs, we're going to write a blog all about dogs. So first things first, I want to write a blog about how to get started when you've got a puppy. I need some ideas. So inside the input area, we're going to type, write five ideas about what to expect when you first get a puppy. It's now writing five ideas about what you can expect when you first get a puppy. Now, these are just ideas. So using this tool to come up with inspiration is a fantastic way to start utilizing it. Now, one big thing for new puppy owners is they really struggle with chewing. And that's fantastic because item two or point two is all about chewing. So I like that theme idea. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, what a lot of people do, they copy this line and then paste it in and they just press enter. That's not what we're going to do here. Remember, previously I said that ChatGPT remembers the previous inputs we put in. So it's actually clever enough to know what we're going to refer to. So we just need to tell it what we want to refer to. So we're going to say, write a blog outline about number two. So we're going to do enter. Now, the reason I've asked it to write a blog outline is because when you're writing anything, one of the first things that you do is break down the overall blog. You want to break down the overall blog because trying to tackle an enormous blog all in one go can be quite difficult. So if you break that 
blog into subheadings or the outline, you then got all these subheadings that you can focus on instead of the main theme of the actual blog. So it basically takes one big problem and breaks it down into lots of small problems that you can just work your way through. So you see it's now written the outline. We've got our main heading, then we've got our subheadings for each outline. So next, what we can do is something really simple. We can just say expand each area and there's lots of different terminology on how you can get this software to expand. But the way I like doing it is really simple. Expand each item and you can actually say as well include references. So I'm just going to say and include references and then press enter. It's well on its way to expanding on each one of these points. I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the end of all of this. So I'll be back in just a second. Now we're at the end of this blog, but what you'll see is sometimes you'll reach a limit that ChatGPT will just cut off and it will cut off at the last point. If you have a decision to make, you can either just copy up until a point that makes sense, or you can give it another command, which is continue and do enter. And you can see it's recognized where it stopped and it's continued the text for us. So now we have our expanded points. The next step is even simpler than the rest. And before we progress to that, I, I do want to just quickly recap what we've done here. So if we scroll to the top, every single prompt that we have given ChatGPT in this thread is super focused. So, and what it's going to do is it's gonna understand that it's talking about dogs here. It's then gonna understand that it's starting to talk about a puppy chewing, and then it's, it's kind of feeding itself more information about puppy chewing right here. So now we've got really focused information and content all about the specific thing that we've been writing about or asking ChatGPT to write about. The next step is actually turning this into a blog. We're just going to say, turn this into a blog and we're going to want headings and subheadings. So I'm just going to say with headings and subheadings and do enter. Sometimes it might not always understand your prompts or your prompts just might not be good enough. So this is what it just generated for us, which really isn't what I wanted, but that's okay because it just means that we need to get more focused with what we're inputting into the software. So if I just scroll down a little bit, I've now told it to turn this into a 800 word blog and include headings and subheadings. And now you can see that's exactly what it's doing. So we have the introduction and then a paragraph. We have section one, the, the heading, and then the paragraph we have, and then section two and so forth. So now it's actually converted all of those points into a full blown blog for us. And just like that, we have a blog, which is so exciting because then we can now utilize this for whatever we want. The next thing we're going to cover is research. We're going to keep the research pretty simplistic, but ChatGPT can be used to research things kind of how you use Google just for general search or trying to find new things. You can do the same with ChatGPT, but it's more focused because it's more like a conversation with ChatGPT rather than Google sending you a directory of links. Let me show you. We're going to start a new chat and let's say we want to find books or the best books on say how to make money online. List five best books on how to make money online and then do enter. When you're researching these sort of things, it is important to get more specific because the whole idea of the five best books and how to make money online is pretty subjective. How does it work out those ratings? And generally speaking, I think it just, it finds the top ranked books or the most commonly spoken about books in this area, in this particular topic, which is how it probably determines if these are the best books. Does that mean they are the best books? Mm, who knows? But I've read at least three of these books that it's just listed and all three of them were pretty good. The next step is now we want to get some keynotes about one of these books. So I'm just going to say, write the key notes about number one, which is the four hour work week. 
all the way through this entire tutorial, all I've been doing is asking it exactly what it is I want it to do for me. There is no hardcore commands or best commands for this or that, it's entirely how specific you are with what you want. The reason you see me pulling right or list is because sometimes I want a list of information like bullet points, other times I want paragraphs of information like for a blog. So what suits more? This is kind of how you think about when you're pulling prompts in. Because remember, it's not going to provide you with something that you've not asked for. So the more generic you are, the worse the results are. But the more specific you are, the better the results are. A brief description saying that the book is divided into three parts. It's then expanded on each one of these parts. Now, how can we incorporate this into our daily life? Well, we just ask it to write tasks for us. Using the key notes from this book, write a set of daily tasks for me to complete, which will help me implement the idea of the book and then do enter. It's taken the core components of what it's been writing for us and it's converted it into tasks from what we should be doing for each of the three criteria that the four hour work week tells you to implement. Then it tells us how these tasks should be done. So it says all these tasks should be done in a systematic way and should be reviewed regularly to measure the progress and adjust the approach needed. How cool is that? There are tons of ways you can use ChatGPT for research and this is just one of them. And remember, the more proficient you become, the more you realize that you can interlink, you know, this sort of research with blog creation, with mission plans, emails, all sorts of things, it all interlinked. Which will lead me on to the final thing we're going to cover in this ChatGPT tutorial, which is some cool other things that you can do that you probably didn't realize ChatGPT could do. And I'll show you how we can interlink all of this together. So we're going to carry on in the current thread that we're in with the books, and we're going to do something pretty cool. Check this out. We're gonna tell ChatGPT to write us a table displaying the information for the box. So we're gonna take the box and we're gonna ask it to create a table with specific headers and then fill out the information. So we're going to say, write a table with the following headers, book title, book description, and book pricing. Now we're going to join other things together with this command. We're going to explain just specifics that we want. For the book description, I don't want paragraphs, I want a item list, okay? So just points, okay? So we're going to say the book description should be bullet pointed and no longer than, let's say, 100 words. In fact, I don't like saying no longer than 100 words. I'm going to say and a maximum of 100 words. And then I'm going to add another comma after book pricing and I'm going to say places to buy this book. Now you'll notice I've not given ChatGPT pointers for the book title or the book pricing or places to buy this book. That's because I think it's all pretty self-explanatory and the only thing that really I wanted to format differently was the book description. So let's go ahead and see what it comes up with. And now check it out. It's doing exactly what we asked it to do. I've actually noticed this with ChatGPT. Sometimes it has formatting issues and it's probably because it's in the early stages. So this isn't quite what we wanted. It seems like we're having some performance issues with ChatGPT. It is a free tool right now. So uh, when there's too many users on the platform, Form, these sort of things can happen. So we're going to do stop generating. So we're going to open up a new thread and we're going to paste in these books. And I'm just going to rewrite or retell it what we want it to do. So let's do this. There we go. It just seems ChatGPT was playing up, but do expect this, especially with free tools. I'll leave a link to another AI copywriting platform that you do need to pay for, but it provides more current and just overall better results and it's much, much faster. Now you could take this table and just copy and paste it into your blog or wherever you want it. Or you could say, hey, let's do something fun with this. So let's say convert this into 
HTML. So what you see happening here, for those of you who know, who have some basic HTML and CSS knowledge, it's actually converting this into the markup language. So you can just copy and paste this or the snippet of code and bang, you've also got that as well. Now, if you'd like me to create another video on really digging deep into all of these other formatting things that you can do with ChatGPT, comment below, let me know, and I'll go ahead and do just that. However, I do hope you've enjoyed this ChatGPT tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.